high school class about Feynman and Gelman. I don't know where they came from. Probably it was like a magazine published by Caltech. Somehow, you know, uh, maybe a few years before, yeah. and it arrived, it was some classmates were reading. So and I was already interested in physics, right? So, uh, yeah, but in those days, uh, there's very little information, okay? The only information you have is print, you know, like a book. Yeah. And the book usually out of date, right? Because it's several years old. I remember Hang uh, Sang, uh, you know, the bank. Right? They published a book of at least US university, okay? In each university on one or two pages, right? one page probably, starting with Arizona, starting with A, you're all the way to the bank. So, so you go and you go to the bank, you go to the library, you check out that book, and you read. So everything is just on that page. No, no internet. You don't remember, right? So all you know, so for example, if I did not read that magazine about Caltech, I just looked at it, it says CIT, California Institute of Technology, it said there's 200 students. So yeah, so okay, forget it, I probably won't know where to go. See? I remember actually, uh, I applied, I eventually applied to only one university, which is to Caltech. But initially, I sent my application to to three places. I, and now that I, uh, one is Caltech, one is MIT. Okay, it was a CIT, MIT. MIT was much better known. Okay, MIT, I forgot why. Uh, then I sent it to uh, another IT. It's called Northrop Institute of Technology. It's in Los Angeles. Because it builds airplanes. Northrop is like Boeing. Because I was interested in airplane, right? Remember? So I sent it in. And frankly, today looking back, it's crazy. Because North NIT is completely different from MIT and CIT. The NIT is where you actually you train to be a technician. You build airplanes. You know, MIT and CIT, they train you to get a Nobel Prize. You know, it's very, very different. But but I didn't know, right? I basically looked them up in the Hang Seng book, okay? And so then I, uh, I took the SAT. I took the SAT. I did very well in the SAT. I got four marks, basically everything. Okay, I got four, four, uh, 800. You know that is now I think it's, uh, it's not 800. Yeah, 1200. I didn't know, right? I, mean, I never taken the SAT, I didn't know. I said, wow, you know, this exam is so easy. <laughs> so I said, oh, maybe, Maybe I should uh, apply. Oh, in fact, I took the SAT. Then I applied to these two. I think actually, I think it's the other way around. At least for MIT, because I only applied to CIT. I read the magazine. I said, "Oh, pretty good. Maybe I should try MIT too, just in case CIT don't apply." Me. But what happened is, by that time, I had passed the deadline of the application date for MIT. But MIT, you check today, their deadline is in December. In uh, most other U.S. universities in January, I didn't know. Right? I had to wait for the SAT exam. I came back. I said, "Oh!" Then I I sent this thing to MIT. They said, "Sorry, you passed the deadline." See, MIT doesn't make exceptions. They said, "Oh, you are four eight hundred. <laughs> but I uh, I was turned down by MIT again when I applied to graduate school. Okay, because for some other reason. <laughs> okay, so I told people, you know. I've been turned down by MIT twice, okay, by Queens College once, okay. So, yeah, but yeah, but you know we are partnering with, uh, with MIT. It's an interesting question. Now, I again, I for my undergrad, I went to Caltech, which is a very different place from Stanford, where I got my PhD. In some sense, I, I, I had hoped, wished that I had reversed the two. You know, I, I, I wish I had gone to Stanford for undergrad. I go to Caltech for graduate. Because for undergrad, I really believe you, you need to meet as many people as possible, open to as many ideas as possible. You know, at your age, your brain is a blank piece of paper. Okay? Uh, but I, I cannot complain about to count that first to stand uh, to stand it, right but but if I had want to do it again I would prefer to do it the other way around because 
I may end up doing something else. I may end up studying political science. Who knows? Because knowing me, I, you know, I, I, I'm interested in different things. Uh, I would get to know different people. Okay? The friends I have, my best friends today are from college and, you know, and PhD. So, yeah, uh, for example, my friends at Stanford, they're all computer science. Then when you go to graduate school, it's already a little bit more narrow. Because yeah. you, 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 know, you don't go to these big classes, right? You, you meet, most of my friends are in computer science. But they become a leader in industry. Oh. The guy, my roommate, has become VP of Google. Okay, so he's now with uh, Sequoia Capital, you know, one of the big venture capital firms. And so on and so forth. He was the head of Bell Labs, the, the computer science division, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I know I can call people in my field, but I really don't know a lot of people in, uh, you know, out of history and so on. If, but in my undergrad, I would know, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So and I, the other thing is, uh, Frank, I made a mistake when I was an undergrad uh, in choosing what I studied. See, remember, I get my bachelor and my master at the same time. Right? And uh, I just did more courses. Okay? And the way I did it was, uh, I guess I was uh, a little bit, the thinking was, I want to take the most difficult course. That is all. And I think if I can handle that, this shows that I'm, I'm good. It's the stupidest thing, okay, I, I think. So, for example, aeronautics, right? I will study uh, aerodynamics, okay? Uh, then the next thing I want to do, I want to study hypersonic aerodynamics. You know what I mean? I literally did. I did, okay? But, you know, it's becoming, uh, you know, narrow and narrow. Okay, it's more and more technical. Whereas what I should have done is that I should have taken more elementary basic courses in broader areas. Story. So, so in Caltech, I want to be a physicist, right? Yeah. So I studied physics. I studied out of five man lecture notes, you know. So I did very well. I got A pluses, A plus. So, so after sophomore year, second year, sophomore means year two, year two. You know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. That's how they call it. Okay, one, two, three, four. It's like school based admission. You know here. You know what you're studying? I'm studying in applied math. So you're in science, right? You don't have to declare. You can, uh, after one or two years, then you say, I want to study math. Mm -hmm. right? In engineering, you also do business, the same thing. Right? We have a school-based. So US has always had that. So, so I was just studying. Everybody at Caltech has studied physics. I was just with, uh, everybody has to study math. Okay? So, but anyway, after the year two, I have to declare a major. So naturally, I want to be a physics major, right? I went there for that, I'm, I'm good in exam. But then I really thought for myself. See, this is one thing I have to know. Somewhere along the line, somebody said, you have to think. Turn my turn, you have to think for yourself, okay? Because you're choosing a little bit what your future career is. And I'm saying, am I really good in physics? On the face of it, I'm good. Because I do good grades. But I realize getting good grades doesn't mean that you're good in because I know, so I, I, I analyze, I said, I'm, I get good grades because I can solve the problem in the exam. And in the exam, typically these are theoretical problems. And typically they're math problems, right? You know, physics. Yeah. Basically, you do something and then convert it into a math problem. I want to get a math problem, I have no problem, okay?